Hi there people, so I've decided to do a wee channel advert um, <coughs> This is just to explain who I am and what the platform is So there's probably going to be some swearing um, If you're offended by that or if you have kids watching then you know you have been warned <laughs> um, I'm doing this just so that you know it cuts out any confusion or misunderstanding of who we are here, who I am in particular and what this platform stands for so, you know, I'll get right to it. Um, you know, for me, two years ago, I asked the question. The question came to me, you know, is it true that this place that I'm living and experiencing is actually a sphere? Now, when I delved into that, I found it to be nothing but religious hogwash. And I will go through in a wee minute the 10 best reasons they know the earth is round and highlight exactly why it's religious hogwash. For me, I have never been religious. I have never been into, you know, crazy spiritual ideas or religious ideologies or any of these things. For me, you know, I focus purely on natural science. For me, my whole life, my attitude has been um, any claims that are made to me, you need to show me or I am not going to, you know, put any belief into it. And again, you know, I'll say it now, beliefs and faith for me are mind viruses. They have no place in human existence whatsoever. Uh, you know, the only way for me to have a sane experience is to know, to actually experience things, not take things on hearsay um, or believe things blindly. You know, um, and again, these words for me, you know, language is a matter of understanding. So belief for me is something you hold to be true, especially something that has no proof. Right. So belief doesn't even come into it for me. This question is about the objective reality. It is an objective question. Um, and I've said it to people many times. If you doubt that there is an objective reality, um, you know, take a newborn mind, drop a brick on it uh, and tell me that there is no objective reality, okay? There is an objective world here and it can be experienced by people, it can be measured um, and explored by everybody. So, I applied that attitude when it came to this question um, and in natural science it requires observable, measurable, testable, repeatable if it is reality, you should be able to scale it and show it on any scale. So, if it doesn't come into that criteria for me, then it's not, entertain it's not to be entertained as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, here, this is the main point for people. When you hear flat earth or you see flat earth in the titles here, I am the one who... Um, says flat earth there's a reason why i put flat earth in the title so it's up to me to define what flat earth means if you come to me with a preconception of what flat is that's your problem that's no my problem you know we can't have generalizing going on and that's a deliberate ploy was to put straw men out there you know the straw men being flat maps and models whatever it might be because the reality of the situation is this and I'll give you an analogy. If you have, you know, a tribe of people who are captive on a group of islands, say, you know, maybe 10 miles apart, and you have convinced those tribes of people that the islands that they share are part of a sphere, okay? Now, as they may have believed that for 100 years. As time goes on, they question the validity of you telling them that they lived on a sphere. They find that there is absolutely zero proof that they live on a sphere. So along comes a sphere believer and demands that these people who have been held captive on these islands their whole life um, represent a straw man um, and that the globe believer or the sphere believer demands that they answer questions on the full dimensions of where they are. Now that is absolutely preposterous, okay? Ridiculous. You stick to the claim, here I stick to the claim which was a globe, that's what was pushed to me. 
The globe is false. It's a lie. The reality of the situation is now, I do not know where I am. Nobody I know knows exactly where they are. The full dimensions are unknown. So the real flat model is we do not know. It requires further inquiry. It requires full exploration in order to falsify or verify anybody's maps, models or claims. It's as simple as that. In science, you're allowed to say you do not know. That is how you have progress. When you start claiming you know something, when you don't, you're not going to progress. So the real science, real scientific method has the ability to stand still and say, we do not know. We can falsify the claims that are put to us. And that is it. So on this platform, we do not represent any maps or models. The represented claim here is the globe is a lie. There is zero proof for a globe. Now we do not know where we are. Simple as that. End of story. But you have so much um, deliberate push with these maps and models. And for me, it's to muddy the waters and to cause confusion. And you will see them deliberately calling it a debate. The natural world, you do not debate. The natural world, the objective reality, does not require your belief, your wishes, your desires. It is what it is, regardless of whether you are alive, breathing, eyes open, eyes shut. Okay, so you do not debate it. I know that fire will burn me, right? Fire is an element, a part of reality. If I go into water, I know if I inhale the water, I will drown, right? There is no debating the natural world. Water does not conform to the exterior of shapes. Bodies of water do not hold and display convexity. Right? I know that to be true because that's reality. Water is a natural element. Testable, measurable, repeatable by every single person alive. Okay? So you do not debate the natural world, the elements, the laws. Right? So when people call it a debate and they come asking for debate, that tells me that you have two opposing sides with ideology. Natural sides is not interested in people's ideas, people's wishes, desires and beliefs. Right? So on this platform, people are welcome to come and have discussion. Right? It can only be discussed. And if you're making claims about the objective world, it must meet the criteria of observable, measurable, testable and repeatable. It's as simple as that. Okay? So, you know, and again, this platform, I started this platform because there's so many people, maybe confused people, maybe people who deliberately push these ideas that muddy the waters. But here I wanted to stick purely to the subject. The subject I'm interested in is what shape is the earth I'm upon or within, whatever you like. You know, I'm not interested in religious ideas. I'm not interested in text from books. I'm not interested in any of these things. Right? I'm not interested in whether dinosaurs were real or not. I'm not interested in any other subject. This subject is a subject on its own. Okay? No, people will try and associate and put labels and attach other subjects to this subject, but you're not going to get that here. That's not how it works in this platform. I don't represent anybody else. Nobody else involved in it represents me. Right? This is a platform purely for inquiring people who realise what they've been told is nonsense and who now want to discover and progress. Right? That's what's happening here at this platform. And that's it. For anybody curious, um, I'm going to show and highlight the reasons why the globe is religious jargon. It is total nonsensical crap. Right? And I'm going to play this two and a half minute clip of the 10 best proofs that you know you live in a globe. Just to highlight it, you know, for the new people, it's only two minutes long. I'm not going to show the visual in case of copyright, but you should hear it in the background. And I will pause it and express. Okay, so. Number 
pretend. All the other planets and stars we've ever seen are round, and there's no reason to indicate that the Earth should be any different. Oh, how fucking scientific. Right. The this is a logical fallacy, right? And it fucking grates on me and pisses me off. There's circles in the sky, therefore I live on a circle. It's the same as saying, the pool balls are round, therefore the table is round. Or, look, here's some apples, they are proof you live on a banana. Or, you know, let's look out of the window of our home in order to measure the contents of our home. It's absolute fucking lunacy. It's no scientific, it's bollocks. Okay, so it's dark somewhere and it's light somewhere. Therefore, the Earth is a fucking spinning sphere pair. This is not science, people, okay? If you have a local light source, you're going to have dark spots, you're going to have a light spot. Okay? If you doubt that, go to a, a, a large field, you know, maybe a large playing field with many football parks in it or whatever, you know, get yourself a floodlight, hold it 10, 20 feet above, pointing down on the park, go to the other end of the park and tell me if it's lighting it up. I guarantee you it's not going to be lighting it up. The other end of the park will be in darkness, okay? So again, we don't have any measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere, by this, this is number nine. We have light and we have dark. Still zero measurable proof that the Earth is a globe. Number eight. The Coriolis effect means freely moving things like cannonballs or hurricane winds are deflected to the right, but only if you're north of the equator. If you're south of the equator, they're deflected left. Number seven. Okay, so here we have more bollocks. The Earth is spinning. Things that leave the Earth's surface are affected by the Earth's spin. Only when it suits them. Okay? Because you ask a simple question, okay, a helicopter taking off from the Earth goes against the spin, it's now going against the motion of the Earth that it is now left. Why is it not taking a shorter time to get from one end to the other? If your journey takes two hours going east, why is it not different going west? Okay? They only want to invoke it when it fucking suits them. Alright? The reality of the situation is, is that there is absolutely zero scientific proof, experimentation, that shows that the Earth moves. They have anecdotal bollocks like this. Oh, the, the wind goes the opposite direction. Oh, the water goes down the drain the opposite direction. What about planes and helicopters and people jumping and cannons being fired? I mean, why, why does the Earth not spin under them? Oh, eh, because magic. They just want to, you know, invoke it when it suits them. Still zero scientific, measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere. Okay, so we're at number seven now and it's getting absolutely ridiculous. I have watched this many times, but no matter how many times I watch it, it infuriates me because of the utter lunacy and the, the downright ignorance of people to walk about calling this science, okay? So, where is the queue of people who have walked 10,000 kilometres in one direction, turned 90 degrees, walked 10,000 kilometres, and then turned another 90 degrees and walked another 10,000 kilometres? Still, zero measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere. And any geology student can tell you this is impossible on a flat surface. Number six, the sun in general gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. I'm just going to get back a few minutes here. Vertical meters to the shadows. Pick two places a few travel away from the equator. In general, gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to figure out the angle between the sticks, and once you add in how far apart they are, you can calculate the Earth's curvature. Again, zero measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere. I'll go back to the other point. You take a local light source, 
Everybody can try this themselves. Get yourself a floodlight, put it 10, 20 feet above the area that you're in. Put a stick here and put a stick here. Put the, the light source in the middle of those sticks and you're going to get different shadows. Okay. Zero measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere yet again. Number five. The stars at night change as you go north or south. For example, Orion is upside down if you're in Australia. Number four. So, I'm sure people know what a red henning is. Um, and looking at the sky is a red herring. Okay? You do not get measurable proof of the shape of Earth you are upon by gazing into the sky. It's the exact same as I explained earlier. You do not get measurable um, data or information of the contents of your home by looking out of the window. Okay? The other point to this is nobody knows what the luminaries are. Nobody knows exactly what the sun, the moon, the stars are, what they're made of, what, the, you know, exactly where they are. Nobody. Okay? And there are so many anomalies with the sky observations when you go to various altitudes. But again, I'm not going to digress into that. We're looking for measurable proof that the Earth is actually a sphere. And so far, we have had nothing, nothing that shows you measurable proof that the Earth you're upon is a sphere. Ferdinand Magellan and many people afterwards circumnavigated the Earth. That means he left headed west, continued going west, and came back to where he started, still going west. Actually, Magellan was dead, but one of his ships, led by Juan Sebastián Elcano, finished the journey. So not only are we getting a story here, a hearsay story, an illogical fucking nonsense about people 200 years ago. The guy never even completed it. He died. I mean, come on, people. This is no scientific proof. This is religious fucking crap. Stories from 200 years ago about great explorers. I'm not even going to say any more on this fucking nonsense. If you head west and circumnavigate the Earth yourself, you'll be able to tell because you'll observe one fewer sunrise than everyone who stays at home. Number three, the horizon. Ships on the ocean or tall Chicago buildings viewed over Lake Michigan disappear bottom first. And you can see the sunset twice if you watch it lying down. Okay, so we'll go to the first three point of this. Note that when they do this, now this is sophism. Look into what sophism means. Sophism is a, you know, something, you know, an argument that is designed deliberately to deceive people. Now here, and you will see this very often, they invoke over bodies of water, ships disappear. Right? Never over land, only over water, because there is a problem with moisture in there. There is an optical problem when we view things over water. Okay? Now, here's a thing. Ships go over the curvature of the water. Bodies of water on Earth, natural physics, provable, testable by every single person alive, very basic physics here. Bodies of water on Earth do not conform to the exterior of shapes. Bodies of water here on Earth do not hold and display convexity. Water is not jelly, right? So when we understand that, we understand that whatever we're viewing over water comes down to optics and it's something that has to be understood, right? Now, the ridiculousness of that is look at the ship going over the curvature of the earth at 12 miles. Right? Left to right, I'm seeing 80 to 100 miles. Zero curvature. So, contradictions here. Again, it's sophism. They are playing on our lack in understanding of perception and how our eyes work. You know, this is why they do it over water. Because of the effect, the illusion that is created when we're viewing things over water, right? We know the water is level and parallel, you know? There is no deviation in, in height or, you know, there's no angle to it. You know, standing here at a level and looking at a body of water curving away from me, the water would flow 
That's reality. That's natural physics. That's the reality we are in. Okay? Again, this is not scientific, what they're offering here. There is absolutely, we're now at number three, and there is zero measurable proof that the Earth is a globe. Stand up. The simple fact is, if the Earth were flat, there wouldn't be a horizon beyond which things could disappear. So from across Lake Michigan, you'd be able to see all of Chicago. And so if the Earth was flat, there wouldn't be a horizon to... I mean, these people are crackpots. You know, I don't even think they're, they're inquiring into these fucking ridiculous points that they make. Okay? Even if we had a perfectly flat, smooth surface for 50 miles, you will not see beyond a certain point. Okay? As I said before, we ha well, there's an understanding that has to be achieved here on how optics are working, how our eyes work, how perception works. But I can guarantee you, the body of water you are looking over is in no way convex. Okay? Because that is not reality. And if anybody thinks that it is reality, the burden of proof is on you. Okay? Now, when we talk about water on Earth, vomit comets are not a natural representation of the situation. Drips on a leaf or drips hanging off the end of a branch are not accurate representations of the claim. Drips of water, surface tension, adhesion are a whole different thing. Vast bodies of water, when drips collect together into a vast body, there's a definite physical behaviour and feature to that. Okay, and as I've stated clearly, you do not get bodies of water to conform to the exterior of shapes. You do not get bodies of water displaying and holding convexity. Water is a natural element, okay? Every single person alive can test that. I trust water before any man-made instrument. Never mind measuring uh, bodies of water with lasers. The water that's underneath the laser beam is more accurate than the laser beam because the laser beam is being affected by the moisture in the air you will get refraction, diffraction, and reflection. If you want to measure over a large distance, if something is level, fill it with water. Okay? Go to your Wikipedia, many people's God is Wikipedia, type in a water leveling device, and it will quite clearly state, over large distances, water is more accurate than a laser for obvious fucking reasons, to anybody with a, you know, half-functioning critical mind. So if you doubt it, and you have other scientific proof to say otherwise, I suggest you go and you update Wikipedia. As well as the Rocky Mountains. Number two, during a lunar eclipse, the Earth shadow of the Earth on the moon is curved. And okay, so again, number two, we're back to the sky. We don't know what the moon is, we don't know what the sun is, we don't know what the stars are, we don't know why there's shadows on them, but people will claim it's the Earth, it's the Earth. Still zero measurable proof that the Earth is a sphere. Remember, we're looking for measurable proof that the Earth we are upon right now is a sphere. Looking up there doesn't give you any measurable proof for what you're standing upon. Number one, we know the Earth is round because we have photographic evidence. There it is. We know the Earth is round because of our religious fucking symbols and images that are not even photographs. Okay, so let's look at this number one proof. Firstly, we know the natural physics of water. Secondly, we know there is absolutely zero measurable curvature here upon Earth. Okay, so based on those two facts alone, I know that to be true about the objective world, water, and there being zero curve. Okay, they are natural elements. Water is a natural element. When your images do not match observable reality, your images are fucking false. They're fake. So, based on these two points alone, I know NASA and the space agencies and anybody else claiming that the Earth is a globe are fucking blatant liars. Right? Now, it might upset people that I swear and I display this anger or this passion or whatever, but people, it's been two years. Right? 
And I am passionate about real science. I am passionate about real discovery. I want to know where I am. Without the foundation of knowing where I am, everything that you tell yourself in your life is an illusion. It's a delusion. Right? It's rooted in nothing. Your foundation is based upon a false premise. You're trying to rationalise and come up with, you know, reasons for your existence based on a false premise. No wonder people are confused and in bewilderment. I, for one, don't think we should be in bewilderment. I, for one, think we should know who we are, where we are, and why we are here. Right? But this nonsense, removing people's foundation, allows confusion and bewilderment. And that's why we have a world full of fucking religious, nonsensical ideology and people at war with each other about their nonsensical ideas and beliefs. Right? Because when you have no foundation and you're trying to make the best of it, that's what's going to happen. Okay? When you go into a tennis court and you are not blindfolded, you know you are on a tennis court. You know you are there to play tennis. If I blindfold you, give you a basketball and tell you to go play basketball in a tennis court, you're going to have problems. Okay? So... That is why the globe is fucking nonsense and religious hogwash. Okay? It's the exact same as any religion. Right? It's anecdotal stories, text, the employment of sophism, red herrings, everything but measurable proof that the earth is a sphere. Right? And they will never have measurable proof that the earth is a sphere because it is no a sphere. The place is 70% covered in water. We know the natural physics of water upon earth. End of story. Right? Now it's a matter of the numbers getting awake. Now it's a matter of exploration. If you understand the game, you understand the psychological manipulation that's going on, it is all designed to keep you restricted mentally and physically. Everything to stifle that natural instinct of the explorer. Right? They do not want us exploring. They want us sitting still within the pen so that we can be manipulated and used to their ends. And I for one do not accept it anymore. Okay? I know that the earth is not a fucking nature defying sphere pair. We live upon a level plane. Whatever the full dimensions of that level plane are, are unknown. We have high points and we have low points, all judged by sea level. Whatever the full dimensions are, whatever is containing the water, I do not know. I'm just a man, okay, who was born into this ca captivity, asked the questions, came to the realisation, and now I'm true to myself about the reality of my situation, okay. And on this platform, that is all you're going to get. Real people in the real situation expressing the real situation. No false claims, no beliefs, no ideologies, no religions. Right? We are open to discussion with anyone. Anyone. But no the fundamentalist, the fanatic globe disciples who have been present, you know, in my presence and on my activity for the past two years constantly, 24 hours a day, there is always somebody ready to respond, right, because this is a huge deception, there is so much wealth, money, control, power, dependent upon it, so you bet your ass there is, you know, no holes barred, no amount of money, you know, is, you know, a problem, as far as this question is concerned, right, these people have been offered the opportunity. The platform is open to them. They do not. They come in and they employ sophism and the same old tired, illogical arguments. Now they just resort to sitting in the comment section trying to emotionally sway people. Okay? And that's the other point. This is not about emotional sway. This is not politics. This is not religion. Anybody who is trying to sway your... your opinion or you know your view of the earth you're upon using emotional manipulative tactics should be avoided this is not about ideology this is not about politics 
This is about real people wanting real proofs and having real discussions about where they are. End of story. So, again, you know, I hope I've cleared this and I hope it's, you know, straightforward for people about who we are and what flat earth means. Because, as I said before, if you have a preconceived idea of a flat disc and show me the edge and all these crazy things, that's your problem. Nobody here claims any of these things true. Okay? And anybody who's generalising and trying to pigeonhole us, be wary of them. Right? The same again, I touched on, you know, the religious aspects. You know, it's a whole other, you know, subject in regards to this being a creation, who we might be, whether we have souls and all these things. There's loads of, you know, discussion to be had with that. But for me, you know, I'm really not interested right now. If I want to get closer to who I am and why I'm here, I first have to establish exactly where I am. Right? So I hope, you know, it's clear for people and I hope it encourages people um, to be straight to the point and not accept any of this crap. All right? Ten best proofs you live in a globe is religious fucking hogwash. Not one of these ten best proofs gives us anything measurable. Right? So, the people beyond the imaginary curve on a Saturday evening, all people are welcome. Um, I opened it up to everybody so that everybody had a voice, everybody had a source that they could converge upon um, and meet up and get to know each other and let each other know that they're there, let each other know that their channels exist, even if you just want to come and say hello, you know, speak to people, tell us a bit about your story, whatever it might be, you know, that's what the platform is there for, people, and I hope that you use it for that. So, peace.